In this video, we will walk through a typical outdoor TV antenna installation, featuring the Channel Master Stealth Antenna mounted to the sloping eave of a roof. Before commencing any outdoor antenna installation, we recommend preparing by going through the following steps. First, find the location of your local broadcast towers. This information is available for free online on various websites, including channelmaster.com, on the antenna selection page. Simply enter your street address and zip code into the tool to view a list of available over-the-air TV channels in your area. The location of your local broadcast towers is shown as a compass heading in degrees. Next, go outside and identify all possible obstructions such as buildings or tall trees that could be impeding line of sight between the broadcast towers and your home. Also, look out for locations or surfaces on the roof or around the house that are not ideal for mounting the antenna. Lastly, for homes that are already hardwired with coaxial cable from a previous cable or satellite installation, you'll want to locate the point where the existing coax enters the home. This is where the cable from the antenna will connect into the home. Mounting the antenna within close proximity to this location is ideal and will save you a significant amount of time and effort during the installation process. For this installation, the local broadcast towers are all located to the west at compass heading 270 degrees. After walking the perimeter of the house, we did not find any significant obstructions that would likely impede line of sight. Therefore, we decided to mount the antenna to an eave on the west side of the roof just above the spot where the coax from the cable company enters the home. The antenna will end up being high enough to gain line of sight access with the local TV broadcast towers. For this installation, we'll be using the following tools and equipment. The Channel Master Stealth Tenna Outdoor TV Antenna. The Channel Master Amplify, an adjustable gain preamplifier. An outdoor balance matching transformer deluxe. Lag screws. A TV antenna lightning surge suppressor. RG6 coaxial cable. And the Channel Master coaxial connector installation kit a power drill, a ladder, a 1 8 inch wood drill bit, a 3 8 inch wrench, a torque wrench, a Phillips screwdriver, a level, a cable wire cutter, cable clamps, heavy duty zip ties, and a Sharpie pen. The Stealth Tenna comes with a standard balance matching transformer. These offer high performance and all around fantastic balance, but for this installation, we'll be swapping out the included standard balance with the Channel Master Deluxe Balance. This professional grade model was designed to ensure the highest quality and performance possible from a TV antenna balance. It offers an enhanced circuit board design in a weatherproof metal housing. It also allows you to replace the leads over time as a preventative maintenance measure without having to replace the entire balance, which could save you time and money in the future. When installing the Stealth Tenna to an eave, place the attached angle bracket up against the side of the eave in the spot where you want the antenna mounted. Make sure the antenna is completely straight. You can do this by placing a level on the top side of the antenna while you are holding it flush against the eave. Next, use a Sharpie as shown to mark the location of where the holes need to be drilled. Then, drill four pilot holes into the eave using a 1 8 inch drill bit. Use lag screws and a power drill to attach the stealth tenna to the eave. We will now mount a preamplifier, the Channel Master Amplify. Keep in mind, it's important to mount the preamplifier as close to the antenna as possible to avoid loss of signal before it has a chance to be amplified. For this installation, we will hold up the preamplifier flat against the eave and drill a couple 1 8 inch pilot holes before using screws to mount it in place. The next step is to use a short length of coaxial cable and connect it to the antenna. Use heavy duty zip ties to hold the ballon in place and prevent it from moving in the wind. Then, we connect the other end of the coax to the input port of the preamplifier. We use a torque wrench to tighten the connections. 
To give your installation a clean and organized look, continue using heavy duty zip ties and cable clamps as shown. As mentioned earlier in this video, it's extremely helpful to mount your antenna within close proximity to the location where the coax from the cable or satellite company enters the home. This is because all of the existing hardwired coax within the home typically originates from this spot. All we need to do is run coax from the antenna to this location and we'll save ourselves a lot of time and effort. For this installation, there's a cable box directly below the antenna. Inside the box, we find a conduit with fiber cable coming up and connecting into a device called a node. Note, you will only find this type of setup with homes that are wired for ultra high speed fiber internet. A node is a device that's used to take light signals traveling along fiber cable from a cable company and converting them into distributable RF signals within the home. Although the homeowner of our installation is switching from cable to free TV, they will still be relying upon the cable company for their internet service. Therefore, we have to be careful to only disconnect the cable company's TV signal and not the internet signal. For this specific install, we disconnected the cable company's TV signal from what's called a grounding block. These are used for grounding the system and are compatible with both cable and over-the-air signals. Per National Electric Code, grounding the antenna is highly recommended to reduce risks associated with lightning strikes. For more information about properly grounding your antenna, we recommend referring to the National Electric Code at nfpa.org. We will now connect the coax from the antenna into the grounding block input. Then, we connect the Channel Master Lightning Surge Suppressor to the grounding block output to offer an added layer of protection against surges. We are now inside the home at the structure wire panel where the internet cable and the coaxial cable from the antenna both run to before being distributed throughout the house. Before splitting the antenna signal, the preamplifier power inserter needs to be installed. The first step is to connect the coaxial cable from the antenna into the power inserter input. Then, run coaxial cable from the power inserter output directly into the back of your television or receiver, for those homes with only one TV, or into a splitter for homes that have multiple TVs. Finally, with the included power supply and cable, connect power to the preamplifier power inserter. It's now time to scan for channels on your television. To do so, click the Menu or Settings button on your TV and scroll down to Broadcasting. On other televisions, it might be called Channel Setup or Channels. Make sure it's set to Air or Antenna, not Cable. Then, select Auto Scan or Auto Program. The TV will begin to search for available channels. This process typically takes just a few minutes. When completed, all of the free HD channels should be available to watch. This concludes the Stealth Tenna Outdoor TV Antenna installation. For additional product and installation videos from Channel Master, please subscribe to our official YouTube channel or visit us online at channelmaster.com.